Well, hello for you, and welcome to your next lesson. Uh, we're going to talk about some other laws of logarithms. We've already talked about the power law of logarithms. Now we're going to talk about the product and quotient law of logarithms. So our goal today, I know how to use the product and quotient laws of logarithms to simplify logarithmic expressions. And eventually we're going to use them to help us solve logarithmic and exponential equations. So, um, Remember that there were laws for multiplying and dividing powers with the same base. Um, we're going to come up with the same laws for multiplying and dividing um, logarithms. Now, the first thing we have to change on this again, and if you printed this out, this won't be a problem on your page. It's simply the software I use to record this likes to make subscripts into superscripts. So that base B should be down there. Um, so we need to adapt the laws of exponents for working with logarithms. Now remember what the laws of exponents were. I'm just going to quickly go through those. If I have something with a base of b to the x and b to the y, since I have the same base, I can keep the base the same and then simply add the two exponents. So I get x plus y. So that what means if I have b to the 4 times b to the 5, then overall that's b to the 9. And we went through how that happened. I've got 4 b's here multiplied by 5 b's here and since they're all being multiplied together I just have 9 b's all multiplied together which is the definition of b to the exponent 9. Now we also had quotient where we say okay if I have um, b to the x divided by b to the y the rule was we keep the base the same and we subtract those two exponents so I get x minus y. And once again the reason for that was if I have say b to the fifth divided by b to the fourth, well if I write that out I've got five b's on the top and four b's on the bottom and when a b divides a b we just get one. And this b divides this b, this b divides this b, this b divides this b, and all I'm left with is 1b on top, so this becomes b to the 1. And again, that's just, whoops, that's simply our exponent laws. Now we're going to have a look at, at adapting them to our logarithms. So we're going to start by saying let x equal log base b of m and let y be log base b of n. So where are we going to go with this? Well, um, by definition that means b to the x equals m and b to the y equals n. So, whoops, this isn't scrolling. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm having a few technical difficulties, but let's see if we can get through this. Okay, by definition, by the definition of the logarithm, from this thing here we get b to the x equals m. That's just the basic definition of a logarithm and b to the y equals n. Okay, so I just took these logarithm forms and turned them into their exponential forms. So what happens when we multiply them? Well, let's multiply them. Let's say I'm going to multiply m by n. And if I multiply m by n, I'm going to get b to the x times b to the y. Now that's just straight multiplying m by n, and since <coughs> m is b to the x and n is b to the y, we get that. Okay. Um, now by exponent laws, that means that m times n is b to the x plus y. We just reviewed that. My reason for that is exponent laws. Now I'm going to take the log of both sides, but I'm going to take the log base b of both sides. So this side becomes log base b of mn, and this side becomes log base b of b to the x plus y. And that is taking the log of both sides. Taking the log of both sides sides. Now over here if you take a look at this log base b and there's a couple different ways that we can look at this. I can use the power law and say okay I'm gonna drop this x plus y which is my exponent down front so we get x plus y times 
times the log base b of b. And this side again is just log base b of mn. I'm not doing anything over there. And my reason for doing this is just the power law, and we've already talked about the power law. Now, if I take a look at this, uh, this log base b of b means what exponent do I have to put on b to get b? Well, that answer, of course, is just 1. This thing in here is just evaluates to 1. Uh, so this side is just x plus y. So this side is x plus y, and this side is log base b of mn. And this side is just x plus y, and my reason for that, again, is just by the definition of logarithm. Straight up definition of a logarithm. Okay, now, carrying on, what does that mean? Well, I've got x plus y. Now, x and y were up at the top right here. x is log base b of m, and y is log base b of n. So instead of writing x plus y, I can write the log uh, base b of m plus the log base b of n. So the log of b, m times n, is that. And this is actually the product law of logarithms <laughs> that states that if I have a product, I can split it up into two additions, or I can go the other direction. If I have two logs that have the same base and are being added together, I can turn it into a single log with, the, with those two arguments, and that's what we call what's in here, with those two arguments multiplied. So that brings me to the product law here of logarithms. This is technically the product law of logarithms. The log O oh, and those should be base B, which if you're copying it down, that's important. Those are not exponents, those are bases. Log base B of MN equals the log base B of M plus the log base B of N. And similarly, and it wouldn't hurt you to go through this whole proof process um, the same way I did with quotient law. In fact, that might be a good thing for me to ask you on a, on a test or an exam is to prove the quotient law. Okay. Uh, and once again, these are all base B. I took the log base B. So if I have a quotient where I have m over n, I'm going to subtract. Now that sort of makes it makes sense according to exponent laws because when I had when I was multiplying two exponents, I added their or two uh, powers with the same exponents, b to the fourth times b to the fifth. I added. So when you multiply two things, it turns into an addition. And down here, when you divide two things, it turns into a subtraction, which goes right along with our exponentials. So how can this help us? Well, we're going to simplify these things using the laws of logarithms. Now remember, unless there's a base written here, it's base 10. And most of the time we're going to use base 10. So let's simplify this. Well, this is an addition of two logs. And the product law tells me if I have an addition of two logs that have the same base, if they don't have the same base, we can't do this. Same as with exponents, if they don't have the same base, you can't simplify them. But here the logs are both base 10, so I can turn this into the log of 5 times 10. So times, or the log of 50. Now sometime that may actually help you out. Maybe log of 50 is a nice number. In this case, log of 50 is not a nice number. Uh, how about this one here, log of 12 minus the log of 2? Well, that turns into, since it's subtraction, it turn, I can turn it back into a single log that's a log of 12 divided by 2, since it's a subtraction. So that's the log of 6. Now, these ones are getting a little more complicated because I have uh, letters in there instead of numbers. So what this shows me is that I've got an addition of two logs here, so I can put those together, and I get log of, and they've, they've got the same base, so I can do this. I can multiply these two things. Log of 5a times 10, which is going to be 50a. Log of 50a. And then I still have to subtract the log of 2b. But remember, when you subtract, I can turn that into a single logarithm 
but this time the single logarithm is going to be division because this is a subtraction in here. So 50a over 2b turns this whole thing into the log of, and you can simplify this in here, that's going to be the log of 25a over b. Which isn't a whole lot simpler than that, but it is a little bit simpler. Um, now how about this next one, log of x plus 6 log y plus 3 log y. How are we going to turn that? Well, we've got to deal with this 6 and this 3 here. Those are exponents. So I have to I have to put them back in their exponential form. This is going to be log x plus the log of y to the sixth plus the log of y cubed, if I put them back that way. And now since these are all addition here, it's going to turn into one big um, multiplication because we're going to have the log of x times y to the sixth times y cubed. And one last simplification, y to the sixth times y cubed is simply y to the ninth, so this is just the log of x y to the ninth as my argument. Okay, now this says evaluate, so that must mean that when I'm done simplifying this, it's going to be pretty easy to come up with it. So, uh, and here's where the log laws actually make a little bit more sense other than this. This kind of looks like I'm just taking one complicated expression and making another complicated expression, but this one will actually help us out. Um, so here I'm going to have the log of 50 times 10, so the log of 500, if I'm doing this in a couple of steps, minus the log of 5. And then here, when I subtract the two logs, I actually am going to divide the arguments. So I need to do 500 divided by 5. So I'm going to get the log of 500 divided by 5 is the log of 100. And hopefully you know, and this is log base 10, remember what this actually is asking. It's asking what exponent do I put on 10, because that's the base down here. What exponent do I put on 10 to give me 100? So the answer here is 2. Now this one here, and oh, we got some base 12s and we got my base problem again. Log base 12, log base 12. <clears throat> okay, the first thing we notice is that this 4 has to go up on the 2 and this 2 has to go up on the 3. So I'm going to turn this into a single base. Uh, it's going to have be log base 12 because the base stays the same. And this is going to be 2 to the 4th. And since it's an addition, that means this is going to be multiplying in here. Um, 3 with the squared on the top. So 3 squared. Which is going to be the log uh, base 12 of, well, 2 to the 4th. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So this is going to be 16 times 9. And 16 times 9 is actually 144. And so this now says what exponent do I have to put on 12 to get 144 and hopefully you know that 12 squared is 144 so we can actually answer that question. Yeah, that's about as simple as it gets. Okay. If I wanted, I could have done this one just slightly differently. I could have uh, written this down in the first place as the log of, I have to do 50, multiply it by 10, and then divide it by 5 because I've got an addition here, so I have to multiply those two and a subtraction here, so I divide the whole thing by 5. I could have written it that way to start with and then got the log of 100 there. All right, next, simplify and state any restrictions. So what does it mean by restrictions? Well, uh, restrictions were kind of over here. I didn't really um, point them out, but down here this says our base has to be bigger than zero. So our base has to be bigger than zero, and m and n both have to be bigger than zero. You can't have a negative number in a logarithm. Why can't you have a negative number in a logarithm? Well, let's, let's take a look at that. Let's say if I have the log of 2 uh, to the negative of negative 8. This says what exponent do I have to put on 2 to get negative 8? Well, I 
if I put a 3 on there, I get a positive 8. If I put a negative 3 on there, I get a 1 over 8. It's still positive. There is no exponent that I can put on 2 to get me a negative answer. So you cannot have a negative argument in a logarithm. So that's what we're talking about for restrictions. So I know that x plus 5 has to be bigger than 0, which means that x has to be bigger than negative 5. Because if it's not bigger than negative 5, then this thing's going to be um, negative. And this down here, this can't be uh, <laughs> negative either. Okay, let's see if we can simplify this though. When I simplify this, this is a subtraction, so I have to divide. So we have, this is going to be the log of 2x squared plus 9x uh, minus 5 divided by x plus 5. And can we actually do that division? Well, can we factor the thing that's there? We might be able to factor the numerator. Um, and if we factor the numerator, then we may be able to, to actually do that division. So let's take the log of and see if we can factor this. Well, we may have a 2x on top and an, or at the start and an x at the start. And 5 has to be in here. And if I put the 5 opposite the 2, I'm going to get 10x and 1x. And 10x and 1x have a difference of 9. So that works. Now I need to have a difference of positive 9, so the 10x has to be positive and the 1x has to be negative, which is nice because now this on the bottom, x plus 5, that's going to cancel. So this is actually the log of 2x minus 1. Now, state any restrictions? Well, this cannot be 0, so x can't equal 5. Um, and in fact, x has to be uh, or x can't equal uh, negative 5 and in fact it can't equal anything less than negative 5 x has to be greater than negative 5 so that this thing is not negative. Let's have a look at this one. When we add we multiply so this turns into the log of x plus 3 times 2x minus 5. And we can multiply that out if we want to. Uh, it's not really necessary, but we can say it's the log of uh, 2x squared. That's minus 15x plus 6x. So that's going to give me minus 9x minus 15. Now from this little thing in here, or from the beginning, both of these things have to be greater than 0. So x plus 3 has to be bigger than 0. So that means that x has to be bigger than negative 3. Or 2x minus 5 has to be bigger than 0. So that means that 2x has to be greater than positive 5 and x has to be greater than 5 over 2 if I'm just solving this inequality. So here's the restrictions on the variables um, brought from pulling that right down there. And that concludes this video.